Hey everybody, I'm doing a little demonstration of net making with a few different types of twine and tools. And this would be good for making, say, a gill net for fishing or a landing net or a netted bag to carry things. Lots of different wonderful applications for this. And there are a couple different ways to go about making nets, and so I'll be describing two different ways. One that is easier to do with shorter pieces, but not as good for a large fishing net where you can use a continuous strand. So I've got some cotton twine and on a netting needle that is made from one twig that's cut green and then bent and allowed to season in this lovely little shape. And then I have this, which is what I call a paraspool. It's a spool that I've made for parachute cord, particularly the innards of parachute cord when you take the outer sheath off and you pull out the inside strands. And so this is the type of spool that I developed for crafting when I was out on a loan, making a lot of things with paracord innards. So it's narrow in the middle and it's smoothed on each side and smaller on one end so I could thread it through holes better. And then another important thing for net making is having what's called basically a sizer. So this is just a piece that means that all of the loops in my net are going to be consistent and that's important. So you want to have a nice sizer that is going to be smooth and have rounded edges so none of, none of the twine is going to be catching on little jagged splintery bits. So I have strung up here a piece of parachute cord. It's attached on either side with a clove hitch to the two trees here. And it's not super taut. It's just nicely held so it's gonna stay vertical. The first technique I'm going to show is just with a bunch of short pieces. And this is just using simple overhand knots so you don't need any special skills. And it's quick and easy to do, but it is not a very efficient use of material. And it's a static net rather than one that allows a little bit of give and movement. And so this would be better for a landing net or a gathering net or bag, but not as ideal for a larger fishing net like a gill net. This is the line that's going to be the top of my net. So I'm gonna start by taking each of my pieces and finding the midpoint and then lining them up on my paracord just with a loop that I pass the string through and then pull top. So this is essentially like making a lark's head knot with each piece of twine on my line. So now I have all of my loops on here. I have six pieces of twine, but because it's doubled over, functionally it's like I have 12 pieces of twine. And then I'm gonna arrange them so that they're all equidistant from one another. And I could use my little measuring stick, this to set up the distance. So make sure that they're all one measuring stick width away from one another there a little bit. The twine has a lot of texture and a lot of bounce back so it doesn't cling as well as something smaller so just for demonstration purposes. And now very simply I'm just going to take two strands together and tie an overhand knot between them. So holding this as one unit and then tying a knot. Super basic. The first one I'm leaving because there's nothing to tie it to. What I want to do is take one piece from two loops across from each other. If I just do within one, then I'm just tying these two together and then I don't have a space between them. So leaving one, so I'm grabbing from the second or the first and the second pieces of twine. <laughs> this is not the best material. If I wanted to do a net all from scratch, I could do this with cordage I had made from plant fiber, dog bane, nettle, milkweed, inner bark of basswood or maple or other trees. And this sisal twine is kind of a good demo of this because it is kind of a coarse plant fiber, but it's not truly corded, it's just twisted ones. And this one, I'm really just eyeballing and trying to get all of the knots 
at about the same place down the length of the twine. And then once I feel satisfied that they're all pretty nicely matched, then I'm just gonna go and kind of hand cinch those knots a little bit tighter. So that's the first row. And now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do the next knot with between two different pieces. So first I did the right hand piece from the first knot and the left hand piece from the second. Now I'm doing the knot all within that first piece of twine. So I'll alternate row by row. So I'll line this up with the knot on the last row and then I'll tighten it so that this is one measuring stick width from this knot. And one thing that is wise with this type of net is as you get down towards the bottom of your net, where it's might likely to have more weight, is to actually start bringing these closer together. So it's larger on top, and then the part that the, the weight or the fish or whatever it is that you're gathering is gonna be sitting on top of, having your loops get smaller and smaller. So essentially getting to like half this width at the bottom. And that's gonna both make it stronger because there's knots more often, and then of course make it less likely that small things are gonna find their way through your net, which would be rather silly. So here you have it simple style of net making using material that is coarse that you have made yourself or whatever you have on hand and it's a way to quickly and easily make an effective net. Now if this was to be a landing net I would want to have it be of course in a hoop so I wouldn't want to be doing it flat like this. This setup was more for doing a gill net style but I could do the same technique but around a bent hoop that would be the handle of my net. Similar for a bag or something like that I could make it by just twisting a willow into a circle and then making it like that and then I could transfer it to a nicer handle later. So lots of different ways to go about making this, but that is one very basic technique.